Grand Rising family, it's Shay Seeking, and this is Not Your Mama's Bible Study, along with a little bit of His Story Lied. So today we're going to complete this article. Um, sorry it took so long, and sorry it took so long to upload those last videos. As you guys can, guys can probably see, um, the timestamp for the videos were was uh, Friday, <laughs> when I was talking about how proud I am of getting all the videos up. But for some reason, YouTube would not let me post one of the videos, and I had to go through a lot <laughs> to, <clears throat> excuse me, in order to um, upload, uh, sorry, there's something here on the screen, um, to upload that video. And then I did notice when I was uh, uh, reviewing or listening to the video that there were several things that were uh, clipped out. Um, I think I was going to make a uh, reference to um, the file of the air in Genesis um, to subdue and fill the earth um, when we we're talking about something here. Um, and I think this was part one. Uh, but there was a whole bunch of little pieces that were like muffled or taken out and that irritated me. <laughs> but I'm not going to do it over. Um, hopefully you guys can, you know, get the gist of it. I don't know how much because I only listened to a couple of little portions of it. But anyhow, we're going to go ahead and finish this up today. Um, and then we're going to move on to something else. Um, like always. <laughs> so, um, let's see. Uh, so we left off about the church. Now it says, Zachary Fletcher, one of the town's first settlers, became the first postmaster. Okay. And the first entrepreneur in Nicodemus, establishing the St. Francis Hotel and a uh, livery stable in uh, 1880. Um, I've never really heard of a livery stable, so I'm probably going to go ahead and have to look up, uh, look that up. Um, let's see. In 1880, his wife, Jenny Smith Fletcher, I guess this is these two here. Um yeah, something kind of different about the way this guy looks. Something like real different. Um, and I'm not trying to say that in, in any kind of way, but he just has uh, features. I'm really good with like faces and uh, features and uh, different uh, looks that people get. I don't know. I'm really good with reading people and reading faces and remembering faces and things like that. So... I don't know, he just has a, a different type of, kind of like a Drake kind of look to him. You know, um, just very, uh, and you know, maybe it's the lighting with the image or whatnot. So, um, his wife, Jenny Smith Fletcher, became the first post mistress and school teacher and one of the original uh, charter members of the African Methodist Episco Episcopal <laughs> Church. The uh, complex the complex that Fletcher built, which housed the post office, school, hotel, and a uh, stable, later became known as Fletcher uh, Switzer House um, and was uh, in, an important focus of activity in the community. The building still stands in Nicodemus today. By 1880, now, uh, while we're, uh, do, 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 do. While we're looking into these dates and these times, um, I was watching something last night and I kind of want to come to you guys with a little bit of this. It's just a thought, okay, um, that um, I was watching this thing about Exodus. Um, no, it wasn't about Exodus. What was it about? Mm, goodness, I can't remember. I'll have to just bring it to you guys later. Um... It was a decoded video or whatever by somebody. Um, and they were talking about, you know, how someone was placing a certain event around 1270 uh, BCE. But now people are saying that uh, they were talking about the time being jolted and shifted and that you can't just, you know, uh, look at certain points of time, whatever. I'll, I'll just share it with you guys. Um, and then there was something about... Uh, and this is like in the middle of my sleep. I fell asleep with it on. And um, it was saying something about 1270. And then they said, oh, no, well, you know, scholars are saying now, you know, that it may be 4, 
um, 70 um, BCE. So I'm thinking even when we're talking about BCE, 470, okay, um, if you add that to, if on my theoretical weird timeline, um, if you add that on to 1500, um, you're going to get the 1900s. But if you add it on to 1400, you're going to get, um, what am I trying to say? You're going to get around, uh, the way I was thinking of it was the event was reminding me of 1870. So, you know, I'm going to go ahead and do a lot more digging in on the 1800s because I really don't think that things happen the way that they want, that they say that they did. And I'm trying to figure out here who is in, who are the slaves really? Are these people still the slaves and now they have you down on paper because the pen is mightier than the sword? Are these people really our slaves and we are the real slave masters? But they had the power and opportunity and they had the pen and the books and the writings at that time. So they were able to now change this and we may still be in those positions uh uh, with our birthrights, but again, we have been letting someone fool us because we've been letting someone else that is definitely your oppressor, in a sense, dictate what your truth is and what your story is. So this is something that we really want to get into, especially after reading those slave laws and and how um, you know they weren't calling these people slaves really until the 1800s around these slave well in certain portions of the country but anyhow we're getting off track it's just so many things that i just want to talk to you guys about always <laughs> so let's just go okay so by 1880 nicodemus had a population of 500 uh boasting a bank two hotels three churches a newspaper a drugstore and a lot of this you know i went ahead and broke down and and tried to watch the whole uh i got it from the red box the whole uh harriet tubman movie and you know a lot of people are saying what they're saying about the movie but you know one thing that i do realize is there was a lot of unspoken but seen and maybe they went unseen um, incidents in that movie that pointed me in different directions and gave me a lot of different clues as to what may have been going on. So, again, everybody's going to see it at their own level of awakening, okay? Um, so, yeah. A newspaper, a drugstore, three general stores surrounded by 12 square miles of cultivated land. Okay? And cultivated just mean that it's, it's, uh, being tilled, it's being uh, 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 seeded, it's being watered, irrigated, you know, to a certain extent, okay? Um, as the town began, Governor John, St. John, okay? So there's a lot of Johns in the biblical story, um, and then his story as well, okay? Um, but this John, St. John, and the fact that we're in the book of John um, really just stands out to me, Okay? Um, especially like I told you guys before in the portion of the story where, um, they went to go tell that, um, well, I think I already said it in another video. Okay. So, um, so yeah, that's really just speaking to me is speaking to me, um, made a speech welcoming the new arrivals, then possibly at the, uh, urging from S J Gilmore, a uh, land commissioner for Kansas Pacific Railroad, who said of the blacks, uh, indications are that we will be overrun within the next year. Governor St. John began to discourage black immigrants. So again, now we're going to use black. <clears throat> we, we've used uh, colored. We've used African. We're using black. I don't know if we use African-American, but just have note that when someone is writing something like this, whether they know it or not subconsciously, you have to realize that a, a writer that wants you to, okay, this is what I'm saying. Somebody that write a book about a girl named Jane. We all know the stories about Jane 
you know, something might say, yeah, uh, Jane was in her room, but when she came out, well, yeah, okay, so Jane was in the room. It didn't say anybody else was there. And it said when Jane, I mean, and when she came out. So I can make reference that we're talking about Jane still, right? But say Jane's name is Davenport, her last name. Now, it might say Jane went in the restroom, but Davenport came out. Well, who the hell is Davenport? We were just talking about Jane. So again, I'm making reference to the fact that why not just use Jane? We may be talking about someone else that was in the room. This is just how, the way that I, I think that all of our minds work, but I think that we shut that off when it comes to religion and the mass manipulation and mind control that has gone on with that. Um, so when you're talking about Jesus and then you come back and one sentence later, you're talking about the Lord and then the Lord, this, that, there has to be some reason why these terms are changing. Because if someone wanted you to understand something, they would not try to mix and manipulate the, the, the scene like this. They would be very factual about what, who said, okay? And you have to be, it does that a lot in the Bible. You have to really be paying attention to this. You can't just breeze through, okay? So, um... Yeah, so now we're talking about blacks. So could we say that there might have been a mixture of uh, American Aborigines along with some Africans, along with some darker Japanese, along with, you know, there could have been, we could be talking about anything here. Um, and then also we're using now terms that they're trying to bring forward and use on everyone that may not have been used prior to, to split, divide, and cause, uh, uh, cause a... Um, division um in order to make it easier to conquer by giving people titles you see titles that make you feel so uh much higher than others even though you may look the same or these things like this okay so indicators um are that we will be overrun in the next year um to discourage black immig uh discourage black immigrants so not he, he's not saying discourage the african not discourage uh all these other ones but black now today we know that that term is used to describe a multitude of darker view people in america that are not really a color you are a people and if you were going to be a color you would be a copper colored or brown or red or yellow tone uh brown skinned person <laughs> um so again and then it's also saying immigrants where we use the word immigrants prior to this. So again, this must mean something. So let's just go ahead and see if we can look here. <clears throat> Sorry, I have just a portion of the screen up. Um, so I'm hoping that this will work. Oh, nope, we didn't spell it right. Come on. Okay, one who immigrates, 1792, American English, okay, uh, perhaps based on French immigrant, okay, from Latin immigrantem, uh, present uh, participle of immigrar, I don't know, uh, again, to remove, okay, to remove, um, go into move into, see, immigrate, okay, um, immigrant is older, first used in English in, uh, Jeremy, whatever history, um, and he generally is, uh, uh, credited with having coined it. There's another deviation from the strict letter in the English dictionary, which is found extremely convenient in our discourse, on population. Now, what is a discourse? Because, you know, I've been running into a lot of writings that are talking about their, um, uh, their discourses. Um, could this just them be blatantly saying that these are the things that they're writing, uh, for a discourse? Cause this, you know, it makes me think that some other than the course, <laughs> um, now, and it says on population. Okay. So derived from immigrant, oh, I thought that said Negro, <laughs> okay, uh, Mergo are derived, uh, emerge, immigrant, um, are used, uh, scruple, and 
some parts of volume. Da, 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 da. Okay, so this is just talking about one person's writing. So let's just look at immigrate. Okay, to okay, so this is probably more what we're talking about. Okay, so to pass into a new place as a new inhabitant or resident. Now, are they new to the country or are they new to that particular town? You know, what, what are we talking about? Like fresh off the boat, you know, or what? So to pass into a new place as a new inhabitant or resident, okay? Especially to move to a country where one is not a native, okay? So this is definitely talking about bringing someone foreign into the land for the purpose of settling permanently there. See, okay, now this is what I'm saying to us about some of these people that look like you that had a certain standing or amity with the governing forces that are not you, but they have been here permanently. And some of their children are the ones in the entertainment industry that want to lead the American Aborigine astray. And the only reason that they're there is because they have shared bloodlines with some of these foreign entities that came here prior that prior to them. Okay. So then we look at this, um, 1620s. Isn't that the first colored, um, folk coming here in 1619, supposedly. So past participle of immigrant to remove, to go into, to move in. Okay. In, on, upon. Okay. To move. Okay, so let's look at migration just for the fun of it. Changes of residence or habitat. Uh, removal or transit from one locality to another. So a migrant worker is someone that is moved in the same place, but they ch change their residence, like me moving from one city to another. You know what I'm saying? Or them moving people from their uh, orig original lands to Oklahoma or like a removal thing. OK, so that's a migrant thing. OK, um, especially at a distance. Right. OK. And then 1610. Again, this is prior to them bringing other people in. So what was happening around 1610? This is a very prominent time, the 1610, and, and we really need to go into what was going on the course of things here in America and maybe other places around that time of persons, 1640, of animals. Uh, okay, so 1610s of persons, okay? So we're, we are not really, when they say we the people in the declaration, that is talking about them, uh, foreign entities, foreigners. Um, all the way probably from the servants. Um, I keep on forgetting, and y'all know I say this all the time. <laughs> mm, yeah, the people at the bottom of the caste system pyramid, the last brick, okay? Uh, commoners, servants, and peasants. That's what they are. Um, on up to the presidents or kings in the militia or army and the forces, uh, what, what can we say? Um, merchants, landowners, um, and then the school, uh, the education por portion and the religious aspect. All of these things are foreign. We've uh, we've adopted these things because we've let someone else steer us for so long. OK, so 1640 of animals. Again, now this may be again, it'll be important to see what laws and things were going on in certain portions uh, like the earlier earlier. The. Uh, Earliest conquered places, okay, is what I'm trying to say. Um, because the animals, again, that, that kind of goes with the flora and fauna, or the um, the animals and plants are usually the things that are aboriginal to a land. Um, and maybe even indigenous, we can include that too, okay? So a removal, a change of abode, a migration uh, to move from one place to another, um, which is extended from root, mere, I don't know, to change, to move, to go, a number of animals migrating together in 1880. Now, aren't we in 18, because I'm going to just go back. I'm going to just go back real quick. Because some of these times that we're, we're, we're looking into right now are very prominent. Now, this is not the one that we're in. That was 89, but here we are right here. 
1880, a population of almost 500. So this is you. So now we can make reference to the fact that they're using this in the right, correct terms to describe these people. But what about the blacks? When they were talking about the Africans, okay. But what are we trying to say about the blacks, the so-called blacks? Okay. Uh, okay. Now let's keep going. <laughs> that European birds migrate or migrate uh, across the seas or to Asia was understood in the Middle Ages. Now, don't just think that we're talking about some birds that's flying in the sky. Also, keep in mind that we're talking about certain birds. Like, um, I was looking at uh, a documentary yesterday about George Washington, um, and it was talking about his brother. Him and his brother got sick. Now, the brother kind of looked a little, you know, like he a little kind of, you know, amalgamated, like a little bit, right? Which is bringing me... <laughs> Because they were saying something about the land was rich that Washington and his family lived upon the land, you know, and it it shows a couple of, uh, uh, aboriginals there. And I'm I'm just wondering what with, uh, with a lot of these mansions, a lot of these things, since I know that there was a society here, it's hard to prove it because they really do good at hiding this information. Um, since I know that there was a prominent society and empires and things like that here prior to and they were um, owned by so-called black people. OK. Um, the, the whole thing is just a change of power and a change of hand, right? So, um, uh, the brother, okay, had a funny looking thing, you know, in the uh, image on that they showed on the documentary, um, it, it might even be been Washington. Um, and you can tell that there was some kind of animal. I thought it was like a worm or a snake or something on his collar, like, uh, I don't know if it was like embroidered on there or something, but you could tell it's kind of faded out. Like somebody purposely kind of rubbed it out. And I was just looking at it and I was showing my daughter. I'm like, what does it look like that is on the shirt? And she was like, um, I don't know. And I was like, it doesn't look like a worm or a snake. And she's like, it looks like a bird or something. Don't you see like the little beak? And I'm like, oh, you're right. It does. It, it, you know, cause the neck was kind of like really long and, you know, kind of funny looking. And I said, but it, it you know, it's reminding me of like a land animal. So um, I went ahead and looked at uh, certain birds um, in the seagull, uh, some form of a seagull or something came up for Washington. And then, you know, it all took me back into some more stuff I'm about to sh share with you guys. But again, you know, um, it just reminded me about those that are taking flight still or still foreign that don't that did not connect to the land. And then now he has a emblem um that is shared with his name and with uh the, the and with washington um that is a land animal <laughs> something that is uh, uh basically a, a sea and land animal so you know they, they don't do anything by mistake and things like this so you know we, we'll go into that later but so we can we can honestly really um cross out the fact and this was like in 17 30, 40 something possibly. Um, we don't have to cross out the fact that these could be talking about these symbols that, that are representing certain maritime people. Okay. Uh, but subsequently forgotten, Dr. Johnson. Okay. Now see, maybe this is talking about the same Johnson because there's a Johnson that we we're just talking about over here in Nicodemus, um, held that swallows, uh, slept in winter in the beds of rivers, uh, while naturalist Morton stated that they migrated to the moon as late as 1837. Okay, so this is going into something uh, totally different, but you know, I, I was just wanted to make reference to that. So let's go ahead and go back to, um, just look at this, um, this meh, or meh. <laughs> um, Forms of common, immune, uh, perm or something. Okay, changes, alter, alterations. Again, amalgamation or mixture. Uh, joins, this is what we're talking about here. And I think that that's exactly what we're talking about now. Okay, joins, meets, uh, perverted, false. Again, false. <laughs> Hittite, we have Hittite here. Look at this, Hittite, mutite. Uh, is this a mutation or a mute, you know, uh, you know, be changed into again, subdue the earth and, uh, and fill the earth. 
Let the fowl of the air fill the earth. Okay? Now, we could be talking about literally come here in a multitude. And we could also be talking about semen in their sperm and filling the earth. Okay? And creating. Okay? Mutating the genome of the American Aborigine or the people. Be changed into. Um, also, could this be also on paper as well? Okay? Um, could this be that lively... Uh, Livery or whatever, uh, the livery stable or whatever that we were just reading about. Uh, you see what I'm saying? As a way to populate. Okay, to go, to pass. Okay, and then again, here we go, to pass, to fly above the earth. See, these things were to come in to change it, to subdue it, to, to till it, and to keep it, and to hover over or fly over the earth so again i think that these are talking about melanated people and i would be damned if we find out that these same melanated darker view people from different portions of the land are all coming against the american aborigine because that's exactly what it seems like and they go home to their lands where you can't find a trace not saying that they're not there but they don't promote a trace of people with color there, although they still have monuments and statues with these people there. But again, it's just very strange to move from one place to another, okay, to go past, okay? Okay, so yeah, we get the uh, diminish, okay? Lesser, small, uh, diminish, reduce, lessen, okay? So, I mean, we get the picture there. So now let's look at immigrant one who quits <laughs> so this is one who quits he's not going back probably to the other country now these other people probably have you know their fatherland and their mother and fatherland that they're still attached to but they're just holding on to the the wife which is america what we're talking about to cleave on to the wife okay so this is a person that quits a country or region to settle in another. Okay, but it, it also says a, a country or a region. Now, were these actually countries, uh, small countries in America before they uh, made them United States um, is a question of mine that just comes to mind. Uh, move away, okay? And then we'll just look at immigration really quick. Uh, 1640... Removal from a place, uh, immigrate, move away again to move away. Um, and we'll have to figure out what type of uh, migration or immigration uh, was going on when uh, so-called uh, Moses was leading the people um, out of the wilderness or whatnot, or out of Egypt. So let's go back because I don't want this to take too long like it's already doing. Um, but again, we're, this already began, uh, like he's saying, St. John began to discourage. Now you have discourse actually with disco discourage. Okay. Uh, black immigrants and said that conditions in Kansas were not as promising as they had been led to believe. Okay. So again, this is also making me think, oh, why did you should have just left us in Egypt? You should have left us here or there. Oh, are you bringing us out here so that God can kill us? Or, you know, all this other stuff, like this, these doubts or whatever. So Edward P. McCabe, who joined the colony in 1878. Now, I think around this time, something was going on. I don't know if it was uh, uh, the slaves were free. One second. Okay. Uh, so yeah, um, 1878, um, I'm thinking some things were going on. I'm, I don't know, um, you know, with the whole uh, exodus or Negro removal, uh, freeing the slaves. I I'm just trying to figure out where we're at here. But um, yeah. So in 1878, served two terms as state auditor. Um, 1883, now we know around this time, uh, yeah, this might be a little late in the game for um, anything. But again, they were still doing this stuff to people. They've been doing it to us even still. 
with redlining and all these other things that they've been doing. Okay. Uh, let's see the migrant worker thing that they were doing back in the 70s. I mean, the 60s, things like that. Okay. The first African American in, uh, to hold a major state office. Okay. So again, uh, African, we've, we're going back to talking about African Americans. These may be the true African Americans, okay, to hold a major state office because, again, they don't want Aborigines in these particular positions, okay? By 1887, Nicodem Nicodemus had gained more churches, stores, a literary society, um, ice cream parlor, a lawyer, another newspaper, baseball team, a benefit society, and a band. Hopes were high in the community when the railroad uh, talked of an extension from Stockton to Nicodemus. And in March 1887, the voters of uh, Township approved the uh, issuance of 16000 um, in bonds to attract the Union Pacific. Now, better be careful, but I don't know. Um, again, now that they stopped all of the... Uh, that they start stop some of these people, oh, the black people, I forgot, um, from coming in. Now they're they're just like, okay, we're we're done using these people. Um, let's go ahead and just do this then. Um, and then they they started to grow, uh, and flourish. Okay. Um, okay. Despite the bond issue, the town and the railroad could not agree on financial compensation, and the railroad withdrew its off offer um, in 1888. The railroad established the extension six miles away south of the Solomon River, uh, leaving Nicodemus a stranded island village. Uh, business fled to the other side of the river. Um, now, remember this, we're, we're even in John, he's talking about, oh, the person that you, uh, that is uh, baptizing or doing what not on the other side of the river you know, whatever. And then they say, oh, we all have our different jobs that we're supposed to do by God or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, businesses fled to the other side of the river to the Union Pacific Railroad camp that later became known as the town of uh, Bougie. I don't know. Bougie. <laughs> uh, uh, Yeah, or buoy. Okay. With the businesses leaving, Nicodemus began a long, gradual decline. So again, um, th this reminds me also of a storyline in the biblical text about someone going up to a certain point and being brought back down. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so again, um, I know that they were using some of these people in order to obtain certain things. Um, and then once they were done, see, because wouldn't that be something smart to do? You bring some couple of uh, 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 your Afri-Asian peoples of color into the Americas, kind of have them blend in with the people to get their trust a little bit. Uh, you know, contaminate the bloodline like it says the Hittite will do. And now let's not even get it confused with the Hittites. Now, that doesn't mean that I'm saying these people are a lesser people or whatever. They were just used for a certain thing. And a Hittite is some form of, in my eyes, from my uh, research, um, a African uh, shorter, okay, um, African stock sometimes uh, of people where, okay, um, or I think they're even called, like, in real life, <laughs> um, Negritos or something of that manner. That, that's what that would remind me of from just my research. I could be wrong. You know, that's why I always say I'm not here to tell you what it is, what it ain't. I'm just sharing what it looked like to me. <laughs> so do your own research, please. And maybe you can, you know, like, enlighten me on something. Okay, with the business um, leaving. Okay, so... Was this something basically that was done on purpose? And then now these people, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> They've used this, uh, wait, uh, bond issue. Okay. Township approved the uh, issuance of 16,000. Okay. 
So they gave them the money for this. Um, I don't know. I'm guessing they used the money. Um, and then the railroad didn't, or they were going to use it maybe, and the railroad didn't even come to them. So did they use this money and then now they're going to be in debt, which makes them some kind of indentured, indentured servant or get them into some kind of servitude or something. Um, yeah. With some of these slave laws or whatever. Um, so anyhow, anyhow, okay. Uh, with business leaving, okay. After the rail service failed to materialize, uh, Zachariah Fletcher, the town's first entrepreneur, sold his town's uh, town lots to the original promoter W. R. Hill. Now, again, that just sound. I don't know who W. R. Hill is, but we can look into that because I guess I would like to really know that part. Um, it's funny how he, you know, everything goes under and then now you have to sell it to someone when you've already gotten it to this portion more than likely for less than you even had to. And now you're in some form of a debt. Okay. And now you have to serve as some, serve some kind of servitude. Okay. But continue to run his businesses. Okay. Eventually the hotel reverted to, uh, Gr Graham, uh, County for a time, but was brought back into the family in 1920 by Fred Switzer, a great nephew raised by Fletcher's uh, when Switzer married Aura Wellington in 1921. They made the hotel in their name, uh, the hotel their name, okay? Uh, by 1928, the farmers of Nicodemus were cultivating from 50 to 1,000 acres each, okay? Um... Yeah. So y'all know, I'm going to keep it there. I'm going to keep it there. I'm going to let them have this one. But you know, I'm still looking at it funny. Um, the farmers, the planters, I know what their side hustle was. Um, and then, you know, um, are we talking about some form of uh, slaves? Uh, but, you know, they, they would have said earth, possibly. Thousand. Um, well, no, because, you know got to use acres in order to try to, but yeah, I'm gonna let that one go. I'm gonna let that one go. When the seasons, uh, again, well, when we're talking about seasons and seasoning and adding a little dash of something, it's also bringing me back to the salt of the earth. Um, which also I'm going to show you guys something that has to do with the salt of the earth and has to do with, um, the emerald tablets. Um, it's a book share. Um, and I haven't had time to really get into it, but I just wanted to share it just in case anybody else wants to go into it. Uh, the lands frequently yielded. Now, see, and then here we go with this herb yielding, you know, yielding seed, you know. So it then it bring me right back to what I was really thinking, but, you know, yielded more value in wheat. Okay, see, you know, they got to take me there. They got to take me there every time. I was giving them a benefit of the doubt. Now, we can stay there. We can stay there. We can even keep the farmers of Nicodemus were cultivating 50 to 1,000 acres each. That's fine. But when we go down here and we're talking about the seasons, and I'm telling you the little touches or the additives when we're talking about breeding, okay, people, um, we're not actually talking about seasons, okay? Uh, uh, just like signs and seasons in Genesis 1, I don't, you know. Um, but anyways, I, uh, when the seasons were favorable, so now they're in favor. Now, what would be in God's favor? Didn't God want to make them light in the beginning? And now he didn't just stay in the beginning. This means through the test of time. This is how God would prefer things to be looking even into the future. I mean, if I'm, if I'm wrong, then if you think I'm wrong, then you think I'm wrong. But I think that that's exactly what we're talking about in Genesis. So, um, and not just think, it's just what the definitions and the information that I've obtained sh shares with me. Okay. So, uh, excuse me. Um, so when the seasons were favorable, <laughs> the lands frequently, the lands, the lands, earth, dry land, soil, frequently yielded 
more value in the wheat. Now, when we looked in the Bible a while back when we were doing something about the, the wheat and the tear, and I told you that uh, we read the etymology and we read the concordance and we found out that wheat actually means white. And the tear would be what they want to tear away what but they need to but but you know like uh I think it was Jesus that said you know uh say you go away and a man uh you have your uh vineyard or whatever um and someone comes in and puts something there and it's residing with the you know do you just rip out the tear no you leave it and once it's ready for harvest okay once it's pleasant and good then you remove the uh you harvest the the wheat the white and you put the uh, tear, I believe, in the barn and burn it or something like this. In the barn or burn it. Now, you know, is that a slave quarters or burn it? Um, they were doing things like this. Um, again, or, or what does burn actually mean? Send them through the fire, some kind of ritual or something? You know, I'm just throwing things out there, okay? But than the actual sale value of land. So some people, and I've heard this before, that they some places would refer, uh, prefer to have white slaves. But then again, now you're building your own something that's like you. See, see, now it's not so much about the work. You also need to have value in this stock to produce something that is, so like we're talking about in Genesis. <clears throat> now I've given you every herb built, uh, yielding seed and every tree with its fruit um, inside of it that will basically reflect them. So now you have your white or wheat and it can produce that, okay? And now there's value in that because you can grow your family, you can grow more people that look like this that God will be pleased with, right? Okay, so but in 1929, the depression brought disaster to Nicodemus now, okay? as farm prices uh, fell. Now, damn, that was quick <laughs> for things to be so abundant. You know, what kind of farm prices fell? Did somebody come like uh, John or Jesus and find out that they were selling something they weren't supposed to sell there and shut the whole thing down? I don't know. Most of the young people began to leave the area during this time. Further devastation occurred when the area faced a severe drought in 1932. Now, this could be a drought, okay, or it could be something that is a man-made drought, or it could also be something saying that the dry lands would appear and didn't want to mix anymore because they saw what the hell was going on and it wasn't benefiting them anymore. So they'd rather kill themselves or their young than keep on feeding this, uh, this monster knowing that nothing would change. So again, this is your own discernment. You can use what you want. I'm just going to keep them all there until I figure out exactly what we're talking about and do more research here. So followed by the infamous uh, Dust Bowl. Now, again, this is uh, uh, the Emerald tab Tablets talk about this dust. The Bible talks about this dust. Um, and then, uh, you know, gathering the dust. Uh, you know, I just, I don't know. Days of Kansas in the late winter and early spring, okay, of 1935. Entire families then left uh, what had become, again, or like I'm reading this now, a dust bowl, okay, mm hmm okay. So uh, that sounds like something that's like a bad thing that probably happened. Um, and if the dust is the one that's been gathered up and placed in the east of the garden to keep it and trim it and take care of it. Could this be something that these people, uh, and then remember these are the exodusters. Um, so, you know, I'm, I'm just saying, I'm just saying, uh, could this be something that intentionally someone did because again, they wanted the land for some reason. Okay. So, um, and they were done with these people, um, having amity with these people because they were done using them and now they can do it on their own. OK, so entire families then left what had become an unproductive region. Mm -hmm. In 1935, the small town was reduced to a population of just 76 and supported only a church. OK, <laughs> a hall and a uh, 
Meg, uh, oh, um, Meagery Lee stock. I don't know. I'll have to look that one up. A meager, a meagerly. Okay. Wait, let me move this. Yeah, looks like meagerly. Um, stocked store. Again, uh, stocked store. Ah, uh, whenever I see that term, stock. Mm -hmm. Most of the marketing and trading were carried out at uh, the buoy or whatnot, uh, about six miles away. In 1938, a community center was built and now hosts National Park Service Ranger, uh, historic displays, and gift shop. The community was a WPA project during the Depression and was built from locally quarried limestone. Again, there we go with this limestone. Um, what I would do from here, because I'm seeing limestone a lot, is go into the biblical text and look at where the scriptures are talking about limestone. And I will see if I can find something that was shaped or formed, you know, with the structure or the dimensions possibly, because they do give some dimensions um, of this, something like this, or a story that resembles this, okay? By 1950, uh, was reduced... Um, Sorry. Um, <clears throat> 16 inhabitants and necessities of life had to be uh, purchased in nearby uh, Bui, <laughs> uh, Bougie, Bougie, I don't know. Uh, the post office closed in 1953. More than half a dozen blacks. Okay, so now we're talking about blacks again. More than half a dozen black settlements sprung up in Kansas after the Civil War. But Nicodemus was the only one to survive. Kansas' first black settlement in Graham County, uh, first community, county's first community, was designated as a National Historic Landmark in 1976. Uh, 20 years later, on November 12, 1996, Nicodemus was designed as a National Historic Site. This uh, legislation directed the National Park Service to assist the community in preservation of historic uh, structures and to interpret the history uh, for the benefit of present and future generations. Hmm. Okay. All right. So you can see this. This is some uh, random stuff or whatever. Um, let's see. I would like to see that. Let's see if I can open it in a different window. Mm. Oh, that's too good. So, yeah. So, again, I want to thank you guys for stopping by. Um, I hope I wasn't um, too all over the place for you guys. Um, I think I'm going to do some more on this, but uh, later on, I just wanted to put a little anchor in it um, so we can start talking about it. I think I'll come back with the book share, um, and then I think I'm going to do some more. Let me just stop talking about what I'm going to do because you know it's random, and it's going to be what it is. So, um, I want to thank you guys for stopping by. Um, hope you enjoyed the content. If you did, go ahead and hit the thumbs up, subscribe. Um, and also you can join us on the Facebook group, Aborigines, uh, American Aborigines Unchained, um, for more information and things that we post that are not on this channel. Um, and I'll see you guys soon. Take care.